Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. SIUK Japan is live with Regent College London. Hi there, thank you Yusi. Thank you very much and thank you everybody for joining me on this Saturday afternoon in Japan. In the UK it's morning of course, a cloudy, slightly rainy morning, uh, but I hope you're all well and, and staying safe. So my name is Scott Bushell. I am the head of the English language department at Regent College London and today I would like to talk to you about our international foundation programs which we are starting from this September. Um, So as head of English I'm responsible for English language and academic study skills which actually constitutes about 30% of the foundation program. So my department is responsible for a significant part of the programme. So that's one of the reasons I'm here today. Now, if I may, I'd like to talk about Regent College London. Um, You probably haven't heard of Regent College London, but don't worry, I'm going to introduce you today. Um, We were founded in 2000, so we have 20 years experience. We are a higher education institute. We are not a university yet, um, but we hope to be so in the next two years. So we deliver um, university programmes on behalf of three strong university partners. One of them is University of Bolton, the other is the University of Northampton, and the third is Bucks New University. So we are the London campus for those universities. So if a student wants to get a Bolton University qualification, but they don't want to study in Bolton, which is in the north of England, incidentally, near to Manchester, very lovely place. But if they come to us, they can study in London. And a lot of people want to be in London for obvious reasons, work opportunities, leisure. There's lots going on in London. It's the capital city. And you'll never be bored in London. So we do have a lot of students who want that experience in London, but they want a good, strong qualification from somewhere like Bolton University. And we have three schools in total. We have a school of business and enterprise. We have a school of allied health and social science. And we have a school of computing and AI. So those are our three schools. If you're not interested in business, health or computing, um, sorry to waste your time, but those are what we are offering at the moment. Um, We are regularly inspected by the Quality Assurance Agency, which is very important for quality assurance and academic governance. And we have excellent results in the National Student Survey. So the feedback on our courses is really very good from students and also from external validation uh, organisation. We have five campuses across London and that's really interesting because it gives students the opportunity to see different parts of London. But if you study with us on the International Foundation, you will be studying in central London. If you know London, maybe you don't know London, but You've probably heard of Victoria, Victoria Station and Buckingham Palace. Well, we we, we are literally 25 minutes walk from those areas. We are in an area called Fitzrovia, which is quite a prestigious area. It's very calm and safe and peaceful. There are parks nearby. Um, And our building is next to the BBC building. Um, So it's it's a really good location and if you come and study with us you will be studying there there is very good accommodation very close by within 25 minutes walking distance but if you want something a bit further and um, then we can also find accommodation a bit further out so five campuses central london but also four campuses in north west london in wembley kingsbury south hall and near to hendon Okay, but you'll be studying in the centre. And at the moment, we have 3,000 students. They are all UK domicile. 
British students. They may come, however, from a variety of different cultures. For example, we have a lot of European students. Um, we have African, uh, Middle Eastern, Asian students that uh, compose the, the current student body. Okay, so it's a re very multicultural environment in which to study and uh, socialise in. We believe that um, our, all of our students should have very strong support, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. So everybody is assigned a student support officer, and that is the person that is your go-to advisor if you need any help regarding accommodation or food or living uh, in London, anything outside of the classroom, the student support officer will support you on. And then we have an academic support officer for each student. So each academic support officer will have um, a small group of students that they will be assigned to and look after. And the academic support officer will support you in the class. So if you're struggling with your assignments, or with your writing, for example, if you need any additional help or any problems, the academic support officer is your first point of contact. And then beyond that, you'll have your course tutor, um, the uh, assistant head, and then the head of the department. So four points of contact, but your initial contact will be the academic support officer. OK, so that's really important for international students, making sure that they have got that, the adequate support for their um, happy and successful studies. Our approach to training is holistic. And by holistic, I mean it's 360 degrees. And by that, I mean that we believe that the academic study is very important. We want you to get a good qualification but we also want you to be able to implement that academic study and academic knowledge in a very practical way. And that's what I mean by holistic. And I'll talk in a bit more detail about that later. And finally, we have an active policy of widening access and participation. We want to be able to offer our degrees to all different types of people from all different parts of society, from all different cultures. And that's why our fees are relatively affordable and we offer generous scholarship schemes for deserving students, not for everybody, but for deserving students. So that's a, a little overview of the, um, the college. The other thing I'd like to talk about is the progression opportunities. We're very focused on the career opportunities that you will have after completing your programmes with us. So we've chosen our courses for their employability and for the employment opportunities that they offer our students. We have strong links with local companies. We often put students on placements in local companies with local employers. So we have a good standing with the local industry in London. Um, many of our lecturers are industry professionals or high level researchers within industry. We've chosen people who have a very practical background, but also have a network of people in industry that, um, that we can ask to come in as industry speakers um, and support sometimes on the programmes. Um, so they're not just academics, they are practical industry uh, professionals. Our courses reflect modern changes in industry, in society. So for example, in our School of Allied Health, the programme has been adapted to reflect, obviously, COVID and the impact that has had on the health industry. So we're highly responsive to changes in whichever industry our courses are delivered on. We want to give you, as I said, support in terms of careers advice so that when you finished your programme, you can actually have support when you want um, to, to apply for a job. So if you need help with your curriculum vitae, your resume, your CV, we can help you with that. We can give you interview practice as well, and we can help you with your application 
for a job. And that's all part of the service that we offer. Again, students that come to us, there are two types of student. One type of student wants to go on to a further academic programme. So they start at foundation, then they go on to bachelor's or master's. And other students simply want to get a good qualification so that they can apply for a job immediately or apply for a promotion within their company. So there are two very different types of students, but both very motivated with very strong kind of goals and aims. And our job is to make sure that those goals and aims are realised. Okay, so let's look at the foundation programme and what what is the foundation programme? What does it um, include? So, of course, um, one of the purposes is to focus on the subject specific area whether it is business whether it is health or computing um, we want to give you a strong working knowledge in those particular areas whichever one that you choose then the other thing we want to do is obviously improve your English language and you know the entry requirement for the foundation program is an IELTS 5 Um, But by the end of your time with us, we would expect you to at least reach uh, a level six or a 6.5. So the programme is over a 28 week contact period across the year. And in that time, we would expect you to improve your not, not only your academic English, but also your business or professional English, your communication skills and have a really good working knowledge and working language in your specific area. We want to develop your academic English and study skills for your future studies. So if you are going to go on to another programme, the academic English and skills that we equip you with will be essential for future studies. We also want to, as I said, focus on your communication and intercultural skills. And again, we want to make sure that you're able to go on to study at an undergraduate follow-on programme. If you want to, you can either continue studying with us at Regent College or you can go on to Bolton University. Incidentally, Bolton uh, validate all of our Uh, foundation programmes, not the other two universities. So if you did want to go to another university, Bolton would be an ideal uh, place to study. Um, But of course, you can apply to other universities. And we also want to develop other practical skills that you need for study and also your career, like, for example, time management, organisational skills and ICT school skills, information, communication and technology skills. So again, very practical. Just to look a little bit at what we will focus on in the 30% of the course that focuses on English. First of all, speaking, we will be helping you improve your pronunciation, your fluency, your accuracy, your ability to to discuss and debate, and also obviously have conversation outside of the classes. Ultimately, we want you to be confident to speak up and say what you want to say, okay? In terms of listening skills, we again, we want to address the issue of understanding fast native speaker English, uh, being able to understand generically understand general but also understand specific information something that is often neglected and we want you to be able to listen for an extended period for example to a lecture Um, lots of language schools will prepare you to listen to something for five minutes maximum but you will need to listen to a lecture for maybe an hour So we want to prepare you for that experience. And it's called extended listening skills, writing skills, how to write uh, in an organised way, understanding the difference between formal or informal register, being able to use academic vocabulary um, accurately and precisely and making sure that you are addressing the question of the assignment fully when you are writing. Reading skills, very important for your research. We want you to be able to read quickly, 
speed reading, reading for gist, but also extracting the important information from your research, from your re reading, and to be able to summarise that in your writing. And then last but not least, language and vocabulary, as I said, because you are studying within the context of your future career, um, you will be understanding, expanding your vocabulary range and implementing and activating that vocabulary every day. So you're reinforcing not just general English, but also English for specific purposes and academic English. And that's what we want you to be able to do. And that's going to really help you for your future career and future studies. OK, in terms of the academic and study skills in a little bit more detail. All of the skills are transferable, not only for your studies, but also for your future career. So critical analysis, giving your opinion, questioning the evidence, reformulating the evidence and using that evidence it to support your argument when you're writing. Referencing, we use the Harvard referencing style, incidentally, and avoiding plagiarism. It is a problem in uh, all universities throughout the world, I'm sure. Um, but we want to help you avoid that issue of copying and referencing, of course, will help you to do that. Um, being able to note take, to summarize and paraphrase, which means that you can read or listen to something and then translate into your own words, your own voice, really very important for academic and career. Uh, and then again, practical ICT and library skills. You will incidentally have access to Bolton's intranet and their e-library system. So you've got a really good support in that area. Yeah, again, the other area that we are teaching you on in the English department, but also throughout your course, throughout the academic study is intercultural and communication skills. And when I say communication skills, it doesn't just mean having a conversation and discussing. It also means your ability to stand up and give a confident presentation or to be able to negotiate a solution. Many of the exercises that we give you are task oriented. So there will be elements of negotiation. Managing meetings as well are going to be very, very important for your future careers and the ability to socialize. And when we say socialize, it's not just about talking about the weather, it's about formulating relationships, building relationships, which is essential, again, for your academic success, but also for your future career. And then cultures, I mentioned the multiculturalism of London, the multiculturalism of Regent College. So there are national cultures that you will need to be aware of, so that you can communicate across different cultures and you can be aware of the impact that your communication style has on a different culture, which is, again, really important for building relationships. But also the UK university culture and how that is going to be different from the Japanese university culture. We want you to be happy, successful and to integrate as quickly as possible. So we focus on, you know, the university culture that you're going to be embedded in. And then finally, what I call the other types of cultures that we want you to be aware of, sectoral culture, which is, for example, what is the difference between working in the private sector compared to, compared to the public sector? Um, you need to be aware of that, again, for your future careers. Functional culture, What's the difference between working in marketing compared to working in IT? There will be a different culture according to the job that you do. And we want you to be prepared and adapted to that culture. And then finally, the organizational culture, depending on the type of company that you will want to work in, whether it's a hierarchical company or a flat company, and we want you to be aware of the differences so that with that knowledge, you can go in, apply for a job in the future, understanding the difference between different types of companies and the different ways that they operate. So all of these things we want to touch on and sensitize you to 
uh, the course. Moving on to the learning and teaching strategy, we employ a number of different strategies for learning and teaching. So some of your work contact hours will be collaborative. You'll be working in small groups or pair work or sometimes larger groups for seminars. You'll also be expected to self-study and to do a lot of work on your own and then bring that into the lecture room. There will be tutorials, opportunity for you to get feedback with your tutor on a weekly basis, um, which is very important. And as I said, many of the exercises are very task oriented. They will have, they will enable you to implement your academic knowledge in a practical way. And that's a really important thing for, again, for your future. And then the virtual learning environment for additional support, as I mentioned, Bolton's e-library, lots of asynchronous uh, learning and self-study opportunities to support you. And that incidentally has really blossomed and grown as a result of COVID because a lot of universities have really built their e-learning platforms and e-learning opportunities because of COVID. That's a useful, very useful support for you to have. Assessment, you will be assessed on the course, the foundation course, uh, through formative assessment, which means continuously through the course, through all sorts of different uh, exercises, simulations, mini presentations, debates, discussions, written work. And I think that's really important that you're getting feedback on a regular, continuous basis so that you understand how well you are doing and also we understand so that we can then support you if you need that extra support and then at the end of each module you will have a summative assessment which will be a written report or dissertation often accompanied by a presentation which will be a final mark a final score on that module so we've got both types continuous and final uh, assessment. Okay, just I, I'd like now to touch not too quickly, because I know that some of you may not be interested in all of these areas, but I, I'd just like to touch quickly on the subject specific nature of the foundation programme. So three foundation programmes. The first is the foundation in business management at the School of Business and Enterprise. And that is what the foundation programme modules will look like. As you can see, the first two modules are English and academic skills, which I've talked about. But then you can see business in practice, a module that focus, focuses on different working practices within business, external and internal factors that influence business, practical digital marketing, obviously looking at the digital marketing mix, how the marketing mix um, impacts on the company and the way that it communicates. But the real focus is on digital. Applied business finance, which is interpreting financial data and records. And the world of work, final module, which really relates to human resource areas, but will also give you a good insight into human resourcing um, if you're interested in management as well. So looking at um, the skill sets for different jobs, motivations for different jobs. So you're going to get a focus on human resource, finance, marketing and management within that. Um, and I think it's a really nice mix for anybody wanting to work in a multinational or uh, an international environment. The second school is School of Allied Health. And just a quick word about Allied Health. Um, this school is growing. Um, one of the reasons is because we have, we place a lot of our students in the National Health Service. National Health Service is our hospital and health network, if you're not familiar with it. It is the biggest employer in Europe, not just in the UK, but in Europe. Um, the NHS employs 1.2 million people. But there is a problem with the NHS because we don't have enough staff to operate and to run uh, the NHS. So there's a lot of demand for workers. We need workers to work in the NHS. One of the reasons 
for this is because we have an aging population, the same as in Japan. Uh, the second, of course, is COVID. That has put a lot of pressure on the resources of the National Health Service. And the third reason is that 22,000 EU workers that were working in the NHS have now left and gone back to Europe because of Brexit. Okay, so there are three reasons why actually there is a lot of work, a lot of opportunity uh, in the, the NHS to work. The modules for the School of Allied Health Foundation, again, you can see the first two modules are English, focus on English, um, then the individual and society. And this is about understanding modern society, um, looking at the impact of gender, race and disability within society and how modern society deals with those issues. Research methods in social science, which is uh, understanding uh, and presenting descriptive data on a real life issue within the health sector. And the obvious one, of course, at the moment is COVID, but there are many others that you can choose if you want to. And then the world of work, how work affects us psychologically, socially, and physically. So if you're thinking of going into uh, uh, occupational therapy, this module is really very uh, useful. And then reading contemporary society, understanding how, again, gender, race, social class, disability, and mental health are presented in our media, and what that means for the, the way that those areas are looked at, the perspective that they're looked at uh, by society. So it's the impact of these things, the impact of the media, again, on society. So that will give you a good grounding in healthcare. And then, of course, if you want to go on and do the bachelors and specialise much more, for example, in children's health care or uh, vulnerable adults health care, or elderly healthcare, you can do that on the bachelor's. And then of course, if you wanted to go into something like nursing or occupational therapy, you would need to do a postgraduate. But this foundation program um, is a good grounding foundation for those occupations. And I just wanted to highlight the wealth, the multitude of different jobs that you can go into if you do go into the health sector in the UK. It's not limited to nursing, it's not even limited to working in a hospital. There are all sorts of um, jobs uh, relating to even the legal profession and the police, for example, but also more conventional psychology, social care, nursing, if you want to. Um, so that there are a real, real range of jobs that are offered not only by the National Health Service, but the wider um, health community. Okay, last school to talk about is the School of Computing and AI, and this is our third school, probably our smallest, and I just wanted to very quickly show you the programme for foundation on that. For this programme, English is, is less, probably because there is more focus on maths and calculus and so forth, but the academic language and skills for will focus on your um, English, professional English, but also academic language. Then the fundamentals of computer programming, uh, looking at programming notations, constructs, um, testing strategies, a computer project that requires you to formulate a smarter project with objectives. So you'll work on that project in a group uh, and then give presentation, obviously, on that. Computers in society, looking at the impact computers have on society and understanding some of the legal aspects of software and hardware usage. And then finally, foundation principles too, um, which requires you to solve a range of engineering problems. Um, and this is where you will employ calculus and numerical methods, okay, for those that are more perhaps... Uh, uh, mathematical than me. Coming to the end of the presentation now, you'll be pleased to hear, but just talk a little bit about our 
added value that we give to our students outside of the foundation program. And we offer all of our students access to what we call our thinking into character program. And this is what I was talking about earlier about the holistic nature of our teaching and learning. We want to equip you with a good, strong academic qualification, but we also want you to be ready for your work um, in a practical manner. So we want to develop you academically, but also professionally and personally. Um, we want to give you the opportunity to have a positive mindset when you go into your studies and when you go into the working world. And this is really important, I think, especially with the backdrop of the pandemic. People are suffering from mental health, well-being issues, and we want to support our students uh, studying on that and again for their future careers. So we, we want to support you on emotional intelligence, goal setting, um, but also leadership qualities, leadership skills. And, and in addition to that, entrepreneurship. If you want to start your own business, we want to give you the skills, the practical skills to be able to do that. Um, and on top of that, resilience uh, and positive mindset. So we, we deliver this programme through a number of sessions that you can join or not, it's up to you, but they really do help the practical way of thinking, a mature way of thinking that students need to have uh, for their futures. And I've got a great team, uh, admissions team, that will be processing and looking after your application. In terms of English language, as I've mentioned, you need a minimum score of IELTS 5 uh, in all four areas, if possible, please. Um, and yeah, um, that, that, if you're not sure, that's a kind of strong B1 level uh, in English um, or, uh, you know, a, a strong lower upper intermediate level. And that is everything that I wanted to say today. I'm sorry if I focused on areas that you might not have been interested in, but it, maybe it will give you some ideas of what we do and you can talk to friends and family. But thank you very much for listening. I'll pass back to, to you, C. Thank, thank you. you very much, Scott. Thank you very much for your fantastic presentation. Thank you.